Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More and my special guest Andrew welcoming you to this week's episode of What Did You Think? So if you saw our last episode of What Did You Think you'll know that we covered from the sci-fi genre which was the 1984 movie The Last Starfighter. That movie was nice. Yeah and I should have said it in the last video but um the Last Starfighter is actually a movie that I think I have seen more times than I have seen the Star Wars movies. So My mind is blown. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. But... Yes, well, I'm glad. Um, but to replace that movie on the next spin for the Twister Spinner, I've put in there a movie that I suggested to Andrew as it's something that relates to, to his interest, which is that we are going to do the sequel from the 60s, which is Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD which is the sequel to the Doctor Who and the Daleks, in which Peter Cushing plays grandfatherly Doctor Who rather than the famous Time Lord, mm. which we'll talk about more when we get to that episode, I guess. And I look forward to, look forward to it, yeah. Yeah. So, on to today's episode. So today's episode comes from the WTF category. To replace this movie on WTF for the future spins, I've suggested that after recently doing... An Italian horror movie, which we did, Zombie, aka Zombie Pesci. But I think I stressed it in that video that I'm quite a huge fan of Italian horror movies. And I kind of thought, what could I represent on WTF from Italy that would probably be the perfect choice for WTF? So I suggested that we are going to do the 1994 movie Cemetery Man, which is also known as Della Morte Della More. Do you know anything about it? No, but it sounds Italian at least, so well done. Yes, well, it is a movie that stars the great British actor Rupert Everett. Okay. In which he plays a character called Francesco della Morte, who is actually um, known, is, as it's based on a comic book, um, it's a character called Dylan Dog, which apparently Everett is the inspiration for that character. So hopefully we'll be doing that when it next comes up on the next Twisted Spinner. Yeah, sure. So on with today's movie. So today we are doing a 1988 apocalyptic love story called Miracle Mile, which is directed by Steve Dejarnet, and it stars as its two main actors in this real ensemble movie, Anthony Edwards and Mayor Winningham. So... Miracle Mile. Oh. Had you heard or had you seen this movie before it was suggested? No, can't say I have and for the life of me I can't imagine how this has passed by me until now. Really? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, well, we'll get on to that. So if you want to describe the plot of this movie then we might as well get uh, straight into well, it. Well, plot. Yeah, given that um, there's not much time left in this episode. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> funny you should say that. Um, <laughs> well, um, the um, seem, when it starts out, it, okay, this seems to be a nice, um, offbeat, weird, kooky, romantic comedy. You've got Harry, who plays the trombone in a local band, I think, and you've got Julie, um, waitress, I think. They meet at the La Brea Tar Pit, and it's love at first sight, and um, they're out together kissing and cuddling and being shy and awkward and all. Well, let's arrange to meet um, after your shift ends after midnight and at the local coffee shop. And, um, well, we're going to meet together and have a romantic day. So far, they're so good. And, oh, oh no, except, oh, no, he, um, some freak accident means that his alarm doesn't go off to wake him up. So it's around 4 a.m. when he wakes up and goes, oh, my God, it's 4 a.m. already. And Julie has unfortunately by this point gone home. So he's rushing over to try and apologize or to try to get to her. So, oh, dear, the romantic date is, oh, what a day, eh? But um, then the telephone booth starts ringing. So, oh, what kooky thing is going to happen now? And uh, it's a soldier who... It's a soldier from somewhere who's dialed the wrong number and he's trying to get through to his dad and say that um, they've, they've launched the missiles. Oh my God, 
They've launched some missiles. It's World War Three is about to start. Oh my God, they've got less than 50 minutes until the, the, the nuclear strike hits. Oh my God, World War Three is going to happen. And Harry rushes in to tell them and everybody eventually starts panicking and rushing to the heliport and eventually as he, he's rushing to get Julie, as he, the chaos is breaking out. Oh my God, the missiles are going to strike. Oh dear Christ, World, World War Three is happening. Oh God, what's happening? The apocalypse is here. We're all going to die. I wanted to give my audience a bit of time to take that as you could. Um, yeah, um, I think um, that's pretty much um, all we can describe about that. And given that, um, as, as you said in this movie, um, there's not long to go, really, 50 minutes or so, till the world is supposed to be under attack. But... Oh, and there's a bit of ambiguity there because it's just one phone call from some guy that he's picked up. So is it actually going to happen? This is the whole uh, what if that's going on in this movie, that f from word of mouth, do you believe? what has been said is actually going to happen. But given that um, there is also some unconfirmed um, and, and confirmed stories from uh, from this ensemble cast of people who happened to be in the diner that night, including um, a Star Trek Next Generation uh, cast member, uh, Denise oh, Crosby. Oh yeah, Lieutenant Tasha Yar pops up in this movie. Yeah. She plays Lander, who is um, a character that is kind of involved in sort of the military and whatever and so when she makes the phone call to check if this is actually true you don't get a 100% confirmed yes but you also don't get a 100% confirmed no either he says he says what the um activation code or the activation um code word was and she confirms that at least but that's really all she does confirm before buggering off mm, mm. um what do you think of this movie? Because it's it's a movie that I had seen for many years pop up in polls of the top 10 greatest movies of the 1980s that no one ever saw. Uh, uh, would you agree with that? Well, I'm, I, I am surprised it doesn't pop up more in conversation, even in cult movie conversations, although maybe I'm not looking in the right places. I did look up on the internet and I did see that some critic gave it their imaginary award of biggest lurch of tone or biggest change of tone in movie history. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that about sums it up. I mean, I it's, it's, it's a curious experience of, of watching this completely blind, not knowing what's going to happen in this movie. I mean... You can't do it now, and I apologise about that. But if anyone out there can watch Miracle Mile without knowing what happens in this movie, I do recommend that, because first ten minutes of this movie, I was jokingly thinking to myself, I would have turned this off by now, or what is this silly romance of it's not my cup of tea? But then when... But, oh boy... You talk about things going south in this movie. Oh, blimey, do things go south with the tone, with the ominous, terrible atmosphere, with the way violence escalates. I mean, it's a moving from set piece to set piece of encountering complete strangers who either shout or yell or threaten violence or blow themselves up. I mean, there's a, there is a, clearly there is a message, a very effective message about how civilization will end quickly when the threat of nuclear war is, even the threats, mm. not, not the actual missiles, the threat of mm. nuclear war is enough to um, turn, turn the place to hell in a handbasket. Which I will go back to in a few minutes, which is that, did you know that the, um, the writer and director Steve Bajarnet, he actually developed this screenplay in the late 1970s and he auctioned it off and um, it was one of these um, scripts that had been in limbo for about 10 years and um, he'd been wanting to make it and Warner and all these other studios were saying, this is the best unmade film script that we have on the the black the famous blacklist yes and given that the Jarnett's directorial career occurred maybe a year or two before this with a a movie that probably you probably never even heard of which is called cherry 2000 which stars melanie griffith nope no 
Um, he didn't write that movie, but it, it, it's, it's an okay film for what it is. But with Miracle Mile, um, it's named Miracle Mile because that's the location of the place it's based in. So that's the name of the, the town in wherever it is. Yeah. Um, but what do you think of the acting in this movie? In particular, I want to start off with the two main characters, Harry and Julie, because Harry... Anthony Edwards, who you will know from Revenge of the Nerds, and at the time had been famous for playing Goose in uh, Top Gun. I thought I recognised him from something. Yeah. Um, they're def definitely, for what is required of them, very sincere and look genuinely scared and bewildered. Um, I thought um, the camera lingered a little bit too long on their frightened or bewildered faces at times, but maybe that's the point. Uh, um, the, 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 their core relationship, I um, I was invested in it. And Julie, played by uh, Mayor Winningham, she's been in numerous films like St Elmo's Fire and others. And um, one thing that made it feel a bit weird was her hair was very 80s. I was about to say, well, it's the 80s. What yeah. do you expect? Very 80s, whereas Auntie Edwards is wearing sort of the blue suit and the glasses. Um, apparently... I did think at the beginning of the movie, is this set in the 50s or something? It does feel a bit like that. <laughs> looking what, at what's interesting looking at this film is that um, I suppose the chemistry between Anthony Edwards and Mayor Winningham is really genuine, and that's partly because they were quite close in real life as friends and stuff and oh, okay, I think even now they might even be a couple now I'm not sure after all these years but uh, you know I, I believe in their relationship and you know it, um, I think that it, I think Anthony Edwards is great in this film anyway uh, I think he really really sells it um, that you know when you find out that you've only got a certain amount of time before the bomb is going to go off what are you going to do in that time? And without thinking, you have to take an instinctual idea of are you looking after yourself or are you going to go and rescue the one you love? Mm. So straight away, I suppose, all that he can think of is getting to Julie. Yeah. And um, the visuals are great in this film, I'd say, like with the um, with the lighting and the, um, the setup of the diner and also the, the skyscrapers as well. Yeah, um, you, I mean, we talk about the performances just then, and uh, that is to be commended, but I think if anything really sold me on the movie, it was the direction and uh, the soundtrack also. The, like the way, Tangerine Dream, yeah. Yeah, the way everything is shot and angled, everything felt really ominous and um, empty at first, but then just um, vast and... Well, terrible, really, for lack of a better word. Um, I heard someone else say this, and I, I, well, I, I agree with it. It's uh, the whole movie, with the way it looks and sounds and feels, is like if you've ever had one of those nightmares where something um, you can't understand, but something terrible is happening, and it's out of your control, and all you can do is run and try and understand what's going on, and you can't, and. Um, eventually um, so it feels like it's going to get worse and worse it, this, this is one of those movies that feels like um, you're watching a nightmare happen mm. and um, it's not often I really say that apart from maybe David Lynch movies not not for the reason you're thinking no but... no no but what do you think of the um, the ensemble cast of actors that are in this movie as we've mentioned already we have Denise Crosby and we have um, Kurt Fuller who a year later had done Ghostbusters 2 as the mayor's um, number two asshole kind of um, you know oh I want to be in control kind of thing do you remember him in that? Um, dimly it's been a while since yeah. I've seen Ghostbusters and obviously so. you've got Brian Thompson who plays the pilot in this film who has been Terminator and loads of other action movies You've got Robert Duquay, who we know as the chief of police at Robocop, um, the um, police department. And you've also got um, Alan Rosenberg, who I believe was the Screen Actors Guild president for a short time. He's one of the diners. And um, Earl Bowen, who is also the psychiatrist in Terminator 1 and 2. So uh, do you know him? And... Um, also, in uncredited roles as well, you've got three other people who I want to mention briefly. Jeanette Goldstein, who is from Terminator 2 and Aliens, and um, Eddie Bunker from Reservoir Dogs, and of course, 
the film director Peter Berg, who happens to be one of the musicians in uh, Harry's band. Peter Berg. I notice um, looking at this that um, how much this will mean to you or anybody that um, Julie's grandfather is John Agar, okay. a man I recognise for being the star of a bunch of really bad monster B movies like The Deadly Mantis and The Mole People. Wow, I had no idea. Which makes me feel, oh, this is what happened to him, even if I thought his movies were garbage. He's very he's, he's the kindly grandfather, so I can look on that as a sort of happy ending for him, even if he's going off to um, save his last moments of life before dying in a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Do you think that the movie's release at this time of the 1980s, the effect may have been lost, given that 1983, 1984 was the whole protect and survive and the, yeah. in america you had the day after which was a, a apocalyptic movie for, made for american television in the uk you had fred we had freds yeah they had stuff like this yeah so given that this was like five years later do you think had this been released five years earlier that this may have been a bigger draw to an audience maybe more people would have caught on to its message and they would be talking about it more now uh, whereas as it stands now, yeah, I don't know how much um, impact it would have had back in 1988. But even then, it feels like at the end of the 80s, the culmination of um, all this sort of um, op optimism okay. or um, the... Um, the vibe coming from 80s America, the sort of stark feeling that you can fall in love and play the trombone and have a happy time, but um, the threat of nuclear war is still hanging over us. It's a bit, bit kind of film noirish as well, with Harry's narration in the movie at places as well. But do you like the fact that basically from the moment Harry goes to the diner, it's kind of 100% real time? I think it, that is the intention that is meant to take place over a single night and by the end the sun has come up and people have started watching the news and panicking. Yeah, Yeah, but that, that's quite interesting, which is that given the time of morning it is, it pretty escalated pretty quick, didn't it? That the word of mouth spread to people fighting for stealing things, even though there's no point if the bombs are going to go off. And, and then Harry goes underneath a vehicle and he sees all these dead bodies that have been run over and stuff and like that. somebody it's is very, shooting after yeah, him, yeah. It's very... Well, that's kind of, kind of its nightmare quality that yeah, I was mentioning earlier. Yeah, but you wouldn't guess that from, from its poster or its title or anything no. like that at all. But um, I, I really like this film. Um, I discovered it a few years ago after, again, reading about the whole greatest list of 80s films that you probably have never seen mm. and I agree I think um, this should be up in the top three probably of greatest 80s movies that people haven't seen because there are clearly a lot of movies out there that in the 80s everyone talks about and I'm not going to mention them because you know what they are when you talk about 80s 80 yes well, that's for you on that one uh, but um, yeah the um, Terminator yeah Every time you say it, I have to put a poster up. <laughs> um, but no. Tron. Yes. Yes. Give you a high five on Tron. Oh. Uh, but no, with Miracle Mile. Back to the future. All right, I'll stop yeah. now. But with Miracle Mile, it's um, it's one of those films that um, I kind of think, as as I said, even though we've done a review here, pretty much the movie, kind of the less you know, the better. But we've spoiled yeah, it. Yeah, and with bit. It's, I'm, I'm sorry to <laughs> anybody watching this, um, because I would say. If um, maybe get get someone to watch Miracle Mile for themselves and don't tell them anything about this movie and see what their reaction is, mm. because I was was blown away by it. I was, it left a very profound, visceral, visceral, um, um, disturbing impact on me. And yeah, you um, didn't really want it to end, did you? The puns there, but. Um... Um, we didn't mention that Mike, Mikey, Mikey T. Williamson is in this as well. Uh, Bubba Gump, uh, Bubba from uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah, he was in this as well as a, a good uh, character. Um, he's like, hey man, I got Sony, I got uh, Blood Punk, I got all this in my car. He goes, honestly, it's man. But no, um, he, he was good. But, um, for a movie that cost nearly $4 million to make and it didn't even get 
close to a third of its budget back. Um, I really think that this is the sort of movie, if it was shown on television in the UK, which you have to correct me out there if it has been, but I don't think this has ever been shown on terrestrial television, this well, film. Well, I've never heard of it. And if it know. was, in my head, growing up in the 1990s as a young teenager, I would guess this is the sort of movie that they would show at like 2 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night I'll, on Channel 4. I was about to say that. That's yeah. the best place for it. Yes, because... The, again, no, not, in a, not in a negative way. No, no, no. But, I mean, does it have repeat viewing for a movie like this? For me, it does. I've seen it quite a few times and I quite enjoy it. I think um, it's the characters, the, the ensemble cast, the yeah. who are the ones to root for? Because there are characters in there who you think, oh... They're all right, and then some of them turn out to be assholes, and every man for themselves, or every woman for themselves. But yeah. there's some great who's who of acting talent out there. And the great thing that this film has, I don't know if you would agree with me on this, but the lesser bigger names that you have in films like this, it works better if you don't know really who the main actors are. I mean, obviously, Anthony Edwards, like I said, he was he did done Top Gun a few mm. years prior, but he wasn't exactly a huge A-lister. A a lesson that Hollywood could learn today. Yes. See, a movie like, um, I will mention it briefly, although it's not something to do with this, something like World War Z. I mean, to have an actor like Brad Pitt as the lead actor, to me, that doesn't work. I'd rather have someone who I don't know as the main actor in a film like that. Yeah. Because then it just surprises you, you know? Yeah. But overall, are you glad that you checked out a movie like this? I, I am. I mean, I, again, jokingly... Um, I would have turned it off 10 minutes after it started, and I'm glad I didn't. And um, maybe as a sort of jokey summarisation, um, well, firstly, if I can plug another movie, uh, whilst we're supposed to be talking about Miracle Mile, uh, this reminded me very, the premise reminded me very heavily of Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Which is a movie I haven't seen. Which is Steve Carell and Kieran Knightley, which is the exact same premise, but not as violent as this yeah so if you're looking for something a bit um more light-hearted as much as a apocalyptic love story could possibly be then do check that out after watching this one um if you've ever watched a lovey-dovey romance movie and thought god i wish an, a, a bomb would just come and kill them all well this is your movie it exists yeah I will throw out one thing before we end this, which is, did you watch this late at night? Because for me, I first watched it late at night. And to be honest, that's the perfect time when no one is around to disturb you. You need to watch this undisturbed, turn off your phones or whatever, and just watch it for the duration that it is, which is only 90 minutes. I kind of had to because of work commitments, and um, I actually agree. Yes. So, anything else you want to sum up about the movie? That 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 was it. The seeking friend for the end of the world reference. And uh, if you've ever watched a uh, um, two lovers in a movie, oh God, I wish you would just die. Then you you get to do that with this. So I mm. hope you're happy. Mm. So, Miracle Mile is definitely a movie that, if I was a famous um, American film critic duo, thumbs up from me. I'd say. I don't know how you feel. Thank you. Thank you, that's good. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, Miracle Mile. Aha, uh -huh. I thought that was the um, bomb alert going Yes, yeah, so I was getting a little bit worried there too. Um, it's only the Twister Spinner. So, without further ado, let's see what it's going to pick for the next episode. <laughs> ah, it's mm -hmm. gone with action. Well, we did have an action kind of just now with Miracle Mile. Well, not in the traditional escapism sense. So, to replace, uh, for the action pick, it has come up with, for the next episode, Escape Plan, which is something they could have done within Miracle Mile. Yeah, funnily enough. Yeah, uh, starring Stallone and Schwarzenegger together at last. Well, this should be good. Yes. So Should. Should. Yes. Okay. So thank you for checking out today's video for Miracle Mile. What do you guys think of it? Is it a movie you've seen? Do you agree with our views on this film? Um, if, if so, do comment and let us know what you think and what other films you'd like us to talk about in the future. 
Um, don't forget to check out our other shows on the channel, including my own solo videos and other episodes of What Did You Think? And we also have At The Movies of Andrew, where he'll tell you about the latest films. And we've got other shows coming up in the near future, hopefully. So thanks, everybody. All the very best. And I think no closing statement, because I think that we haven't got very much time. So I think we need to get the hell out of here and save ourselves. Oh, right, yeah. Yes. So bye-bye, everybody. See ya.